Good afternoon, and welcome to the Talent Reach hosted virtual event. Boost your LinkedIn profile to build purposeful business relationships. My name is David Obelt, and I'm the co founder of the Baden Hill Group, a marketing agency that makes big business marketing available for everyone. And I'll be your facilitator today. Here are some tips for the best experience. The quality of the webinar is only as good as the worst connection between you and our presenters. You can resolve most connection issues by exiting and rejoining the webinar. I'd also like to remind you this webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand early next week. We'll be taking your questions for Mandy today during a Q&A. You can submit your questions in the group chat or via email at webinar.questions at badenhillgroup.com. One more time, that's webinar.questions at badenhillgroup.com. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Helen Fareed of Talent Reach. Thanks, David. And welcome, everyone. We have a great group today. We're kicking off the summer edition of our Talent Reach webinars with a special conversation around professional development and personal branding. The goal is to help you boost your LinkedIn profiles and build purposeful business connections. If you're participating today, chances are you know that successful businesses are built on strong relationships. And after another year that has challenged social norms and daily interactions, we thought it would be timely to bring in an expert that can walk us through how to not only optimize our social media presence, but do so in a way that still promotes the most authentic version of ourselves. At Talent Reach, we've continued to invest in people and community. Throughout the year, we've worked to grow and diversify our network, and we wanna help you do the same. So let's explore ways to leverage our new remote world together. Join our network on LinkedIn, stay current on upcoming events, reach out anytime, and we can't wait to see you in person very soon. Here to lead us in our discussion today is the phenomenal three-time Emmy award-winning and renowned online and TV host, Matt Lorch. Matt, it's so wonderful to welcome you here again. Please allow me to open the floor to you and Mandy. Well, thank you, Helen, for the introduction, and it is always great to see you, my friend. Okay, full disclosure, I am really excited about this conversation today because I personally have been wanting to improve my own relationships on LinkedIn. I want to create more contacts. I want to pump up my profile, and I want to use it as a tool to propel my own business. And here with us, we have a leading expert who is going to help all of us do just that. So Mandy McEwen is the founder and CEO of Mod Girl Marketing and Luminetics. Back in 2007, shortly after graduating college, Mandy discovered online marketing and fell in love. For three years, she created her own affiliate brands while working full-time in home improvement sales. And then in 2010, she decided to take the big leap, start her own agency, Mod Girl Marketing. Now, over a decade later, Mandy and her award-winning team at Mod Girl provide humanized organic marketing solutions for the world's most ambitious and innovative companies. Her team at Luminetics partners with B2B brands to generate transformative results via LinkedIn-focused demand generation strategies, training, and implementation. Mandy has been named a top 24 B2B marketer by LinkedIn, listed in Search Engine Journal as a top 12 SEO expert, and named a top 20 female marketer by G2. She collaborates all the time with the LinkedIn team and spoke at LinkedIn's inaugural Studio Week. She's also a renowned marketing and business mentor with eight plus marketing courses and an ink rated Facebook group. Mandy regularly speaks at marketing, virtual marketing summits across the globe. And with that, hello to you, Mandy. It's good to see you. Hello, Matt. Good to so, see you. Again. So great to be with you. We have so much yes. to talk about. So let's dive right into it. We First of all, lot. what are we going to learn today? What are we going to learn today? We are going to learn how to build a powerful personal brand on LinkedIn so that you can accomplish all your crazy career goals and pretty much do anything you want with your life. I mean, LinkedIn, LinkedIn can handle it all for you. So it's all about how to be amazing on LinkedIn, get seen, get visibility, land more conversations, relationships, and really take your career where you want it to go. I love hearing that. So, you know, you have this very unique yet incredibly helpful skill set. How did you become this LinkedIn guru? 
Yeah, it's a really good question. So when I first started out um, back in the day uh, with my company, I discovered that LinkedIn was awesome and highly underutilized. So I would just kind of use it, play around with it and, you know, used it to build relationships when I first started my company. And then I, I found that um, it was easy for me to get on the phone with people and start, you know, building relationships and talking to them. And I was like, man, this is probably the easiest social media network out there to actually get clients on. So I started telling people about it like my friends, my marketing agency friends and uh, consultants, and they asked me to teach them how to do it. So I did. And they were like, you need a course on this. Like, this is killer. Cause I would tell people what I'm doing and they would go do it. And they'd like, write me back and they'd be like, um, I just landed 15 sales calls this week because of what you told me to do. I'm like, really? That's, that's, a, that's more than I'm getting. That's amazing. <laughs> so then, um, I started creating courses and then people started kind of seeing me as this LinkedIn girl then like caught the attention of LinkedIn and, uh, then saw a need to go all in right before COVID hits on the LinkedIn corporate front to help train sales teams. So it was kind of just something that I fell into and I, I saw it was highly underutilized and I started telling people about it. And then I became known as this LinkedIn girl and I've been using it ever since. Wait, so as the LinkedIn girl, you've turned LinkedIn into basically essentially your full-time business. Yeah, kind Helping of. Helping right. others For and other sure. companies leverage yes. it. For the most part. Yeah. We do some other things organically with, with social media and, and content, but um, it is basically turning into um, LinkedIn solutions. Yeah, almost full time. That's incredible. Okay, for those watching, we know you have questions. Feel free to post those questions in the chat. We'll get to as many as possible throughout this conversation. You, you know, Mandy, traditionally, I think many people have thought about LinkedIn as a business only platform. How has that changed over time? Yes, it is no longer a lame business network where back in the day it was boring. It wasn't the cool kids club, right? It's still kind of the lame, not, don't get me wrong. You go to, I speak at social media marketing world and there's all these TikTokers and YouTubers and Instagrammers. And then there's like little old me and Judy and AJ, like the nerd LinkedIn people. So if you're looking at the grand scheme of things, it's still kind of the nerd network. However, it is becoming more of the cool kids place to hang out. So for example, like with, with Facebook, and Instagram and all the changes with COVID and more and more people using social media in general on the B2B side of things, we have seen more of that type of Facebook-esque, Instagram-esque things happening on LinkedIn. And so people do business with people, right? Like we are all human beings doing business with each other. We're not doing business with logos. And I think um, COVID kind of sped that up, the, the need for human to human interaction. And so even though it's B2B, we are still, needing to build real relationships with people. And the best way you do that is let people know who you are as a human being. And so we are seeing more of the personal side of LinkedIn come out, which we'll talk about here a little bit later. Um, but it is definitely 100% changing for the better. Um, everything in the B2B world, I think, is changing to be less stuffy and less professional and more humanized, thank God. And uh, LinkedIn is kind of at the forefront of that. Well, let's talk about the difference between kind of company pages and personal profiles, because you have a company page, your mod girl marketing page on LinkedIn, yes. and then you have your own personal profile. What is the difference uh, and how are companies leveraging those? And how should I be thinking about my personal profile versus my company page? Yes, great question. So com they both need to be leveraged. So company pages are amazing, obviously, to keep your fans and followers and prospects and customers up to date with what's happening on the company front and build the company thought leadership. But as I just mentioned, we do business with humans. So if you are neglecting your employees' personal brands, then you are missing the whole point of LinkedIn, which is to build real relationships. And so they kind of need to play nice together, right? So this is a strategy where both personal profiles and company pages need to be leveraged. And so we aren't building relationships with company pages. Uh, the whole premise of LinkedIn is relationship building, right? You can't really build relationships with a company page. So that's not how it's designed to work, right? So you need to empower your employees, your sales team, your customer facing employees on how to grow their personal brands and build real relationships on LinkedIn because you need to be doing both of them because you can only do so much with the company page. Do you think about yourself as a brand? 100%. Yes. So if we should all think about ourselves as a brand and we should all have a personal brand, and I know that's a difficult thing for many of us to own. Uh, does that ever contradict with how your company wants you to represent yourself on LinkedIn? And how do you navigate that? Yes. Well, as Ron Burgundy says here, you are a pretty big deal. So you need to own that. And regardless of what you think, 
we all have personal brands. So even if you haven't claimed that you have a personal brand, like I hate to break it to you, but you do have a personal brand. So your LinkedIn is, is the home of your personal brand. And what's crazy is a few years ago, literally, uh, I would have told you a different answer right now. I would have said, uh, yeah, you might need to be a little bit more careful with your personal brand. Now things have completely changed. So companies are, are viewing you as an, as an asset not a liability when you have a personal brand. So it is helping them tremendously when they are hiring people that have powerful personal brands and know how to leverage LinkedIn. So you are seen again as an, an amazing asset as an employee and not a threat of someone that's just gonna go and, and get a new job right away, you know? So it is completely changed, but uh, the, you know, everyone has a personal brand and you really need to own it because this is the best way to A, make things happen. If, if you are in sales, for example, if you're in recruiting, whatever it is and you're using LinkedIn, but not to mention, you're gonna be able to do whatever the heck you wanna do when your next phase is coming up, right? So that next job you want, guess who they're gonna choose uh, you know, between you and Sally Smith, when you have a personal brand on LinkedIn and it's apparent and Sally Smith hasn't done anything on LinkedIn for a year, guess who's going to get the job? You, right? So there are so many benefits that help you individually and the company that you work for as well. So tap into your inner Ron Burgundy in your own mind, at least become a pretty big deal when it comes to your personal brand, because that's a big deal for not just you, but your company. That's what you're saying. Exactly. 100%. Yep. It's a win-win all the way around. Modern, modern companies see you as an amazing asset when you have a personal brand. And if they don't, then you really don't want to work for that company anyway, if I'm being honest, you know, because they, they don't know what's up. <laughs> they're not in the modern 2022 and beyond days, you know, they're stuck in the olden days. So, and what you're saying is companies will embrace it. Like if I'm reluctant 100%. to do it because I may not know how my company will respond, you're telling me that companies will embrace this. Exactly. Yeah. And not only that, but they'll want you to be the champion. They'll ask you, okay, well, you're doing it right. Can you help, can you help the rest of the team get up to speed? You know, once they see you doing it, they're going to ask you to kind of be the leader. Right. And so you're going to kind of going to be the leader of the pack anyway. Um, and it's just, again, uh, advantageous for all parties. It's funny you say that because I saw that within newsrooms that I worked in now may not be apples to apples to the industry that you're working in, but those who took a lead initiative on social news management ended up going to them and saying, Hey, can you help other folks who are on air in our newsroom build their brands mm -hmm. online? So I'm so glad you said that. So, okay. Not all of us are comfortable thinking of ourselves as a brand and building our own brands. So how do you do that on LinkedIn? Where do you start? You start with your profile. So this is the most important part of your whole personal brand because it kind of is your personal brand. So your LinkedIn profile is really the, the home of your personal brand. So you need to get this right. And so many people get this wrong because again, they've never really been shown. You don't know what you don't know. So I am here to help you. So you now officially know what to do and what not to do. So you need to start with a compelling headline. So if you see here on the slides here, I have an example of uh, old Pete over here, struggle bus Pete, who just has his title, no headshot, no background. And then you have me over here who has a lot going on with this upper portion of my profile. So the whole point of your profile is you need to let people know what it is you do and who you help. So this is the start of your personal brand. So you want people to really know your why, your what, and your how, which is essentially the intersection of, of those is your personal brand. So why do you do what you do? How do you do it? How are you different? And what do you do exactly? You know, like, how are you helping people? What are your services? What are your solutions, your products? And that needs to be portrayed on your profile. So it shouldn't just be a glorified resume. Um, it's the home of your personal brand. So it needs to talk about how awesome you are. Yes. But it also needs to talk more about how you help people and the value that you provide. And that's what your headline needs to look to do also. So if you see my headline here, I am uh, pretty aggressive with what I'm saying here, which you don't have to be as aggressive as me. This is what I do on the daily. So, and I'm changing this all the time, but they give you tons of character space. So instead of saying your job title as your headline, like tell people like, this is what I do. This is who I help. So the value that you provide and who you help and how you help them is going to be advantageous because as you're engaging with LinkedIn and you're posting content, people are only going to see your beautiful headshot and the first handful of keywords on your headline. And so you don't want to waste that with um, you know, your job title, because that doesn't really tell people what you do. So you could put your job title at the end, but you really need to think about your end user here with your profile. And if you were to land on your profile, would it be crystal clear you know, how you help people and what you do and the value that you bring to the table? So most of us think title first. You're saying that's actually on the back end, give people some passion. Totally. 
Yep. Unless you're like a badass and have this like amazing title and like you, I mean, I don't know. There's, there's some executives we've worked with. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like, okay, it's fine. Just leave your, leave your title at the front, you know, but for the most part with people we're training sales teams, you know, CSMs, AEs, there's no need to put your title in the beginning, right? You put that at the end because again, people care less about your title and more about how you can help them. That's what they care about. They really don't care about your title. They care about what's in it for me. So that's what you need to do. So look through that lens as you're creating kind of your headline about what you do, what you're about. Exactly. exactly. Got it. Okay. Okay. Can I share something personal? Of course, please. I have profile envy because before this conversation, <laughs> I checked out your profile on LinkedIn and I noticed you don't just have a profile picture, but you have like this little video that is right there where you typically have a profile photo um, and, and it made me think about my profile on LinkedIn. Should I be having a short video? Should we all be posting a short video on our LinkedIn profile? And what's the benefit? Yes, yes, yes. Great question. So this is one of the most underutilized, probably the most underutilized aspect of LinkedIn profile. So this is something that LinkedIn rolled out in the last couple of years, and it's called the cover story video. And hardly anyone is doing this. And it is so powerful. You have no idea how many messages I get from people that are like, I love your video. Or the reason I reached out and want to talk to you is because your video resonated with me happens all the time and it's a 30 second video. So it's so easy to do. You go to your mobile phone, pretend like you're going to, you know, update your profile headshot and you get an opportunity to record a 30 second video. And the reason this is so powerful is because you get to, to show people who you are as a human and they, they kind of get in on your personality before they even reach out to you or before you even reach out to them. So they can sense like they know you a little bit before you get on that call, before you get on that message thread. And so it's just a really great way to build trust, authority, and credibility with people right out of the gate. And again, because no one is doing it, you're going to stand out. Like I promise you with everything in me, like I think you promise right now that you will, there we go. There's my, there's the camera <laughs> that you will, that you will stand out and your profile will be a hundred times better if you do this because hardly anyone is doing it. So it's super simple. Just hop on and you can look at mine. You can use mine as an example, but just tell people what it is that you do. So introduce yourself, you know, hi, my name is Mandy McEwen. Talk about what you do a little bit and then have a call to action. Like if there's anything I can do to help you with A, B, and C, please send me a message. Like, thanks so much for checking out my profile. Like it can be super simple. Just grab your iPhone, make sure you have decent lighting and start talking. It's not hard, um, but people are reluctant to do it. I think because a lot of people are camera shy and they overthink it, but it is so powerful. Okay. I'm going to take you up on that pinky promise, by the way. And so here's my other question, my follow-up on that. It's only 30 seconds. Should yeah. it be a big bowl of me? And here's what I'm about, or should it be what I can do for you or a little bit of balance of both? It needs to be a good balance of both, but I am more of, this is what I do and how I can help you. Not like here's about me. It, mine is basically just like my, my name. Thanks for checking my profile. This is what I do. If, Basically, if that resonates with you, you know, hit me up. And I don't say that, but you know, that's the gist of it, right? So it's because they can read about you on your profile. So it needs to be like, what again, what's in it for them? So think of like your elevator pitch, right? So what's the like most important thing you want people to know about you? Put that in that video. Okay. So I need to cater my LinkedIn headline about what I can do for others, my passion. I also need to record a video, which I'm going to get on that as soon as possible. But here's what I love is that you have created a profile checklist and it's online and we're going to put a QR code up on the screen wow. right now. And you make this super easy. Tell us about this checklist and what it can do for people. How can it really help them hone their LinkedIn profile? Yeah, you guys actually get two checklists. It's your lucky day because this URL has two checklists for you. Um, one on what you should be doing every day on LinkedIn and 30 minutes a day, and the other is the checklist. So the profile checklist, um, we don't have time today to go through everything, but there's another awesome feature that hardly anyone is taking advantage of on mobile, for example, and that is the audio clip. And so it's similar to the video, but it's just an audio and it's 10 seconds and you could say your name and what it is you do again. And hardly anyone is taking advantage of that and people get to hear your voice. So I recommend doing both the name pronunciation audio and the video again both done on mobile app but this checklist that's just one example of the many things you need to be doing to stand out on linkedin and so my checklist gives you exactly what you need to do and you can literally go through it and just tick the boxes so i need to add featured media i need to optimize my about section i need to get recommendations i need to do this and so it just goes through all of that and it's super powerful and makes your life really easy
QR code on the screen right now. Take uh, uh, out your cell phone, snap a photo. You can store it for later or modgirl.info forward slash live. We'll put that up too at kind of the end of this conversation, just in case you missed it right now. Okay, I want to talk about another aspect of LinkedIn, connections. And if I want to grow my connections on LinkedIn, what is the best way to do that? And why is that so important? LinkedIn is a networking site. That's the whole point of LinkedIn to begin with. So it was created originally for obviously to get jobs, put your resume out there and to build relationships with other professionals. So a lot of people forget the actual basis of why LinkedIn was created because they get so caught up in the content and this and this and being an influencer, right? And they forget that the whole point is to build relationships. So The more people you're connected to, the more opportunities you're going to have, uh, regardless of what you're trying to accomplish, whether it's sales, getting landing meetings, uh, getting a new job, uh, meeting with industry, you know, thought leaders, uh, journalists, whatever it is, mutual connections are leveraged. So I want you to get in the habit every time you meet someone and in a professional sense, whether it is online or offline, you need to add them to your LinkedIn network because the more people you're connected to, the better. So you can see here on the screen, you know, this is how LinkedIn works with the first degree, second degree, and third degree connections. So the more people that you have in your network, the more opportunities you have to ask for introductions and name drops, and more people are going to see that you actually have mutual connections. They're going to be more likely to actually accept your connection request. So this is something that you have to always consider. And it's something that I train sales teams on every time you talk to someone, I don't care if it's at a conference and on the phone, email, you need to get in the habit of adding them to your LinkedIn network because you have no idea how much easier it is to land a meeting with someone when you have that mutual connection that you can leverage. And if you're not adding those people to your network and you're perusing LinkedIn, looking for people to connect with, which we'll get to here in a second, you're missing out on those opportunities to get those introductions, referrals, and name drops because otherwise you have no idea. So Matt, you and I are connected. Let's say I want to go and get in front of, you know, Joe Smith. And I see that Joe Smith is connected to you. Oh, that's awesome. Matt, how well do you know Joe Smith? But if I wasn't connected to you, if we were just friends in real life and I didn't have you on LinkedIn, I would have never known that you were connected to this prospect, Joe Smith, that I've been trying to get on the phone with for three months. You see? So it's so powerful. Some people are funny about reaching out to folks on LinkedIn. Um, Should I feel that bad about doing it? And really, what is the advantage about getting over that and kind of building that network organically? Yes. Very good question. It's LinkedIn is weird uh, because so many people abuse it, right? Like any social media network. So the reason that people are kind of weirded out with sending cold requests is because they've been spammed. Like we've all been spammed like crazy. You know, there's people that are abusing it that are annoying. So I have a method that works really well, but ideally what first you want to do, first of all, is have the confidence to to know that you know you need to go out there and build these relationships cold like this is just what it is you can't be scared of doing it the worst thing that could happen is they say no right so a have some courage and some confidence to make it happen right um and then b you need to look at opportunities for these people to engage with and so um that is kind of my my friendly leader method which i think we'll get to here in a second but the best way to build relationships blindly is to find something that you can uh, personalize, whether that is a content content piece that you can comment on and like, whether that is something on their profile that made you, um, you know, be like, huh, that's funny, or oh, that's interesting, or oh, we have that in common, or wow, that impressed me. So if you find something that, and you can personalize your outreach and then start a conversation like a real human being, you're going to go a long way. It's when you just blindly come out of the gate and start pitching or there's no real reason for it that people are just kind of turned off. Got it. So let's talk about that because some people grow their LinkedIn network to create future career opportunities. Others really utilize it to turn strangers into high quality prospects if they work in sales or business development. Lots of people doing that just send a cold connection request. Casting as Mm -hmm. wide a net as possible. We learned that in sales, just cast a wide net. Is that a winning strategy or not? And this is where you say you've got a slide that kind of talks about this method that you've come up with. It's interesting you ask that, Matt, because there's actually some recent studies out. Uh, So I'm good friends with Richard Vanderblom and he does a lot of the algorithm updates like his company studies algorithm and they've been doing tests recently. So it's kind of going to slightly contradict what I'm about to tell y'all. I still am a big believer in my method. However, you can still send a lot of cold requests and not have anything in the message and people will accept them. And there's like different, depending on who you're targeting, like 
executives, for example, um, C-suite, they're more likely to accept your connection request if you don't have anything in the message where influencers, entrepreneurs, they are less likely to do that and they're expecting you to customize the message. So there's a lot of like interesting data coming out recently that's like, actually, if you want to not say anything, you you cannot say anything, but I'm going to tell you the right way to do it and how I like doing it. Okay. Wait, this quickly, as we, as we look at this slide follow-up, was there a reason behind why C-suite executives don't want any sort of messaging yeah. behind that request? I don't think we know yet. We're just doing, they're just doing these, these studies and they're just like, okay, we have this group of 400 C-suite that we sent requests to. Half of them had a customized request, half of them didn't. We had another group of 200 entrepreneurs, another, you know what I mean? And they're just going through and they're like, well, the highest percentage of people who accepted it without a message was the C-suite. And I'm like, huh. Very interesting. Maybe just, so they're just all business. I was just busy. Come up I, with honestly, story. I think that's what it is. I, they just I, don't have time to read a message. 100%. I personally think that they're so busy that if you look like a decent human being and not a weirdo, you know, if like your profile looks legit and you don't look like a total fake bot, then they're just going to hit accept and not even worry about if you have a message or not because they are so damn busy. I think that's what it is. That's That's the first thing that I thought of. Got it. Um, let's go back to the friendly leader okay, method and how yes. people can utilize this because this is essential for success. Yes, this is a game changer if you actually implement this. And I don't care if you're trying to get a job, if you're trying to get PR, if you're trying to land new clients, if you're trying to set meetings as an SDR, if you're a recruiter, it doesn't matter. This works for whatever you're trying to do relationship wise on LinkedIn. So what you want to do is you want to find something to engage with. So Look at if they're posting content. If they're not posting content, look at their activity section on their profile and see if they are commenting actively. So if they're leaving content, if they're commenting within like the last couple of weeks, go and engage with that. So react, meaning like, clap, light bulb it, whatever you want to do, heart it, and then leave a comment. And then what you want to do is wait a couple of days so they have time to actually see you and be like, oh, who is this Mandy chick that's commenting on my stuff? Then you send them a custom connection request and mentioning whatever it is that you that you commented on, engaged with. Hey, Susan, I saw your post yesterday on X, Y, and Z. I really found it valuable what you said about A, B, and C. Would like to connect with you if you're up for it. Or, hey, I saw your comment on Joe Smith's post. I love what you said about ABC would be up for, you know, would you be up for connecting here? Question mark, send the message. So this is the best possible way because you're boosting their ego. You're increasing their visibility in the algorithm. You're getting them familiar with who you are before you actually reach out to them. Some people may look at this and say, okay, it kind of feels a little bit like LinkedIn stalking. I'm seeing what they're doing. Oh, I'm commenting on what they're doing, but you're mm -hmm. saying, don't feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it. This is this is like the day we live in, man. You know, <laughs> stalk away. Like people appreciate when you stalk them, really, because you're helping them. Like the more you're helping them, provided they have content, right? If they don't have content, if they're not commenting, if they're not active on LinkedIn, you're gonna have to think outside the box a little bit. Look at their profile. Look at what their company is doing, and you can still send a custom connection request mentioning something else. You just won't be able to engage if they're not if they're not active. But this is what people expect, especially people who are actively using LinkedIn. They expect to get creepers creeping on them and stalking them. And when you do it the right way, they will be appreciative because guess what? No one is doing this. Like what you're looking at on the screen, this is why I have a job and I'm really damn good at what I do and why you know I am busy is because hardly anyone is doing these things. So when you do this and you act like a real genuine human being who like actually cares and you're not just trying to make a sale, you're going to stand out and it's going to be appreciative. You know, got it. I've got a follow-up. Let's pull down that slide, but here's my follow-up. So. We've all seen people name drop, let's say at a cocktail party. That's annoying. But you're telling me if you do it on LinkedIn, <laughs> it actually can really help you. 100%. I do it all the time. However, when you name drop, make sure you have permission from the person that you are name dropping, right? So make sure they gave you permission to actually name drop them. But my good friends, I name drop all the time and they obviously are okay with it. It goes a long way because it, I know it's all about who you know. I mean, we've been hearing this like ever since we were kids, right? It's all about who you know, like grandma, it's all about who you know, you better network when you're in business, all about who you know. It's true <laughs> though, it really is all about who you know, you know, like even if you have loads of followers, like it doesn't matter if you have half a million followers, but you name drop someone that knows someone like, you know, they're going to be way more likely to respond to you. They don't really care about your hundreds and thousands of followers. If that was the case, they care more about like, oh, you know, so-and-so, oh, well, clearly if you're friends with so-and-so or you did business with so-and-so and, and I like them, well, then you're obviously legit. It's just a psychological factor. So 
it does help tremendously, but please, please make sure that you are allowed to name drop the people. That you're yeah, working. that you're close enough and say, hey, do you yes. mind if I make this connection using your name? Right. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, you And don't... if you're not, I just message them. If I'm not super close to someone, I'm like, hey, I saw you were, you know, how well do you know so-and-so? I do this all the time. Hey, I'm trying to get in front of, you know, Joe Smith, Susie, Susie Q. How well do you know them? I see you're connected with them. I know them or I don't know them. Oh, great. Can I mm -hmm. have permission to use your name? Can you give me an introduction? You know, just ask, even if you're not super close with people, you can always ask. Right. Yeah. And, and maintain that trust. Hey, David just got my attention because he has a follow-up question when it comes to creating these connections from Victoria. So D David, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Victoria submitted a question. Uh, this, this goes along with what was being discussed earlier. She wants to know after someone accepts my connection requests, what, what do I do? That's a really good question that I get all the time. You need and so, something that most people just don't even think about uh, because they're like, yes, they accepted it. And then they're like, uh, now what? Or they don't do anything. So you always, always, always send a follow up. Thank you message. So thanks for connecting, Matt. I love what you're doing at ABC and then just start the conversation. So it depends on what your goal is, but the, the you always, always, always want to thank them for accepting your connection request, don't be a weirdo right here, uh, like Will Ferrell. So don't be weird, just be a normal human being and pretend like we're in person and we're talking, like we just met, thanks so much for meeting me. And then you just start the dialogue. So always say thanks. And I always say, if there's anything I can ever do to help you, let me know. And then I do a little tiny line about whatever it is, the reason I reached out, right? So um, my company does X, Y, and Z. I noticed that you have, you know, 10 SDRs on LinkedIn and a few of them, I was checking out their profiles and they weren't optimized. Just curious if they're using LinkedIn for prospecting question mark. So there's all these different ways that you can start conversations with people, but that's the first thing you want to do, Victoria, when people accept your connection request, respond back, thank them, ask if you can help them. And then whatever your point is of connecting, do that. Just make sure it's lightweight. Like you don't want to come out of the gate pitching. You never want to ask to get on a call right away. You never want to put bullet points of like exactly what you do. You just want to keep it really lightweight and simple, but you can still be direct and tell people what you do without being annoying and salesy. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense because I think we've all been on the receiving end of those connections and then bombarded with an immediate request to get on yes. a Zoom meeting. And you're like, whoa. So uh, annoying. Yeah. And, and well, then you feel bad about making that connection. You never want to feel that way. So if you yes. are the one doing the outreach, I think that's, you know, keeping it light and, and you know, slow stepping it is, is the approach that would be incredibly effective. So thank you for that. Can, can we talk about content? Yes, please. Because, Let's do it. Because you preach the importance of content and many people are hesitant to post on LinkedIn they may not have time and we get that they may not know what to post. They may not consider themselves a content creator. And so talk to us about posts and why it is so important to post. And before we get to this, this uh, slide about personal posts, I, I just want to talk about this shortcut that you have created Mandy, because I think that is incredibly helpful for people. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's this one of these things where people are so terrified to post content, right? Especially when we're, you're not a content creator, you're not, uh, you know, it doesn't come natural for you to create content. They're just terrified. They're absolutely terrified. They think that they have to have, you know, influencer worthy content. And it's so not true. So I spend my days training uh, B2B tech sales teams, and I do not expect salespeople to be marketing influencers or marketers. Like that's not their job. They're salespeople. So what we do is we train them on how to curate content. So what this means is you are taking content from all over the web, including your company's content and on LinkedIn, and you're sharing that content, you're repurposing it, you're using it in your own words, and then sharing that somehow, whether you're sharing it directly on LinkedIn, whether you're taking a link to a blog post and adding your two cents, but this is the easiest way to share, uh, to start posting content on LinkedIn. And you can literally become a, an industry thought leader on LinkedIn and not even post a lot of your own content. Like that's, that's how powerful this is because you always have something to say, like you always have your input and your insights that you can add to this. So look at what your company page is posting. Look at what's on their blog. Look at what industry leaders are posting. Look at news that's happening in your industry. There are, there's like endless ways for you to curate content. And then you go and you add your two cents to it. So you always need to add context. That's the key. Don't just like blindly share a link or, you know, paste, copy and paste exactly what someone said, but you can always, you know, add your two cents and then credit the original wherever it came from. If it's an individual, if it's a company, if it's a blog, if it's a media outlet, whatever it is, just tag them and credit them. And 
put the link, you know, if you want in the comments or in the post itself, but there are so many ways that you can curate other people's content and then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think, and it's less stressful. And then you can get into a cadence of doing this at least once a week. And curated content can do as well on LinkedIn as original content. As long as it's quality, you know, so think, always ask yourself, would my audience find this valuable? Would my prospects find this valuable? Depending on what your audience is, right? So if it's valuable and interesting and intriguing, gives people something new to think about, a different way to think about things, it's adding value, that's the key. So as long as it's valuable, interesting, funny, emotionally charged, whatever. I mean, there's all sorts of different types of content. We'll get into it here in a second. It doesn't all have to be, you know, <clears throat> business value. It could be valuable in other ways, inspirational, motivational. It doesn't matter. It could be across the board, but yeah, it, it can be incredibly powerful if you do it right. So when you're just sharing content all the time on LinkedIn, don't do that all the time because the shared content gets way less views. Do that occasionally. I always recommend salespeople uh, to share their company content at least once or twice a week directly from the LinkedIn page. That's totally fine, but you don't want a whole feed. You don't want your whole LinkedIn profile to be shared content directly from LinkedIn. So when I'm saying sharing it and curating it, you can literally go and take content and repurpose it, copy and paste your favorite quote for example, in an article, grab an image, say what you liked about it, and then post that as an actual native post. You don't have to physically sh click the share button. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Okay. I, when it comes to native content, you said something that really grabbed my attention. You said, make your posts personal. So I think for many of us, it kind of sounds counterintuitive because we've thought LinkedIn is not Facebook. It's not Instagram. My post should be about my industry, not about my personal journey through the world. So why is getting personal <laughs> so important on LinkedIn? Yes, I kind of sound like a broken record now, I feel like, because I started off the, our conversation today with saying that like we are human beings doing business with humans, not logos, right? So, and again, this is something that COVID kind of ramped up uh, it, it really did so i was using it to post personal more personal stuff anyway before COVID hit but not nearly as much as i do now but something happened with the pandemic and the, the world and we all are craving that authenticity and that human to human connection i think because we didn't have it for two years right like we were all cooped up so now more than ever people want to know the human beings behind the people they're doing business with and so linkedin the algorithm and LinkedIn's users, because you know they're the ones that kind of drive the algorithm, love personal posts. So whenever you can let people in on who you are as a human being, it's going to go a long way on LinkedIn. So we are way past the olden days of LinkedIn, where it's just a, a resume, you know, site and a boring social media network. So I am all about letting people in on your personal, um, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm don't share your breakfast. Like no one cares what you ate, you know, for breakfast or lunch. Like don't do that, right? But if you can do something that lets people in on who you are as a human something interesting, motivational, inspirational, do it. So I post, I'm a nomad now and I'm traveling all over the world. So I have been posting lots of pictures and videos of me traveling and you do not know how many um, prospects and clients that I have landed just from sharing like non-business posts because people love it. And so again, it lets people know who you are as a human and they feel like they know you more. Like I have so many people like, I feel like I know you so well. I know everything. I've never even talked to you before, but I feel like we're friends. And it's because I embrace this aspect of letting people know who I am as a human being and my interests and my likes and what I do, because we all have a life outside of business, right? Like we're not just all robots here that are business professionals. We have lives. That's what makes, you know, human beings so amazing. So when you do that, you're going to get people that resonate with you instantly. And it's so much easier to sell them when it comes to that or have a conversation with them, whatever your goal is, uh, when you, when they feel like they get to know you more. I thought I was the one who felt like they really know you, but you're saying all these others who saw your personal <laughs> post. Yeah, maybe follow up. Should I bring it back to what I do? Should I bring it back to my industry? Do I need to? Should I bring it back to kind of business and 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 networking really or question. relationships, or or can it yeah. just be about my travels to, in your case, Iceland? Yeah, it can just be about anything, man. You don't have to overthink it, you know. So when I post things that aren't like travel, so I like I like for me personally, I like putting some sort of motivational or inspirational twist on it. So I had like a picture of my mom and dad and I, uh, when I was going through a hard time early last year and went to see them in Kansas from California. And I just had like this inspirational post about how grateful I am for them, like how they're the best parents in the world. They've always been supportive of me and, and my weird, you know, obsessions as a kid and Mickey Mouse and like why I'm an entrepreneur because I'm so ADD and I'm all over the place. Right. And they've always encouraged me. And so I, that was like a motivation. It wasn't just like, Hey, it's my mom and dad and I like, hello. It was, 
I, I am genuinely grateful for my parents. Here's why, you know, so I like putting some sort of spin on it to make people like feel something, but you don't have to, you can literally just post something for fun and it could do really well. So don't overthink it. It doesn't always have to be business. You know, to your point, when you said that one, your obsession with Mickey mouse, absolutely darling. <laughs> uh, I think we can all relate, which is about being relatable. Right. But, uh, but a yes. post that I posted, um, that, that resonated most on LinkedIn was about, um, sharing about an opportunity I had to meet and interview the CEO of Microsoft. Um, and when I got awesome. to interview him, that was about his son who had passed away right when I posted, um, th this post. And, and basically I just said, uh, you know, I'm thinking about you. I have a son that is similar to his son who has cerebral palsy, is in a wheelchair, nonverbal, loves music. And by sharing that, I think it was peeling back the curtain. I think let people know an aspect of his life that they may not know. And it, and, and it resonated on LinkedIn. Um, and, and, and I was just, you know, sending it out saying, I'm thinking about Satya Nadella because I was thinking about Satya Nadella. So <laughs> I think it goes to your point. Don't be afraid to get personal and share because to your earlier point, we're human and we're connecting with other humans and it all makes us more relatable. Yep. Honestly, like the more emotional, like feel good it is, the more viral it's going to go. People mm. love those heartwarming stories and they do well on every social media network and LinkedIn is not an exception. My mom was right. Do not shy away from our emotions, even on LinkedIn. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. People eat it up, man. They love it. They really do. Okay, Mandy, last question. Then we're going to open it up to audience questions. David's been busy tracking those. So thank you to those who have posted your questions in the chat. If you haven't had time, post it now. Let's, last question for me is about timing. We all want our posts to resonate. We want to create engagement. I know that the beginning, that first hour when you post is essential. So what is the best time to be posting on LinkedIn if you want your post to do as well as possible? Great question. I have several rapid fire tips for you on content and I'll start with the timing question. So the first eight to 11 AM, your local time is the best time to post Monday through Friday, eight to 11 AM local time. With that said, try weekends. People are less active on weekends and weekend posts sometimes blow up and you'll get more visibility because there's not as many people posting on weekends. With that said too, Try not to post more than once a day. If you have to post more than once a day, spread it out so that your posts are at least four hours apart. Because what happens if you post back to back, the algorithm is not going to show your content as much. It's not gonna be as visible to people. Um, there's a lot of other like, start using hashtags. So LinkedIn is favoring hashtags now. Like This data just came out within the last week or two. Uh, they are favoring hashtag usage more. So three to five is ideal, but you could use up to, this just changed. Previously I said, don't use more than nine. I think it's up to 12 now before you get flagged, but I just like keeping it you know, under 10. Um, three to five is ideal, but please take advantage of those hashtags. Links are iffy. They don't usually like when you're linking to other things. So test that out too. Um, oh, they want to keep you in the really platform. Well. So they want to keep you on the platform. To... Got yeah. it. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. On everyone. And images are killing it right now. This is changing all the time, you guys. So this is like my job is to keep up with the algorithm. This is why, you know, what we help clients with too. It used to be, you know, polls were crazy like two years ago and then text only was crazy. Like as of right now, July 20th, 2022, images are crushing it right now on LinkedIn. So just keep that in mind. Um, the algorithm for some reason is loving them and they're getting more visibility than like text only posts. Uh, videos are also crushing it too, but and increasingly, uh, and I love video. Again, there's so many benefits of video, but you're not gonna see as many views, but that's when you actually, the, the magic happens is when you post video because people again, resonate with you. So there's lots of tips and tricks and that checklist that I'm giving y'all and that QR code that we're gonna see again, it literally has some of these spelled out for you to make your life so much easier on what you should be doing every day on LinkedIn and these little tips and tricks that I'm reviewing now. You're going to love it. We are all going to be so much more efficient when it comes to our posts. All you right, are. David, I'm going to send it over to you. You have some really important questions. We do. We have some great questions that have come in. And I just want to interject one thing about video for our Seattle audience. You can actually just walk into Fred Meyer and buy a, a ring light now that you put on your desk for like 40 bucks. You don't even have to buy it online. You could go to the grocery store go. and buy a ring light. So I just thought I'd point that out. Um, our first <laughs> Fred question, Meyer thanks you for it. <laughs> <laughs> our first question is, um, this is from Dan, beyond personal profile versus company page, how do you balance the competing purposes with your personal profile? I have my employment purpose, but I have my business purpose. And sometimes mm -hmm. they're, they're not 100% aligned. 
Yeah, that's a really good question. I okay. So if we're talking about, is this a small business owner? Uh, I would presume so, based on the question, because I yeah, as based a on the small question, I'm assuming owner, it's his it's his company page. I'm just verifying it's his company page, right? That he asked in the question. Um, yes, Dan, if you're Dan, if you're like listening to this conversation right now, um, yeah, we'll go ahead know. and roll with it. But I'll so, let them know in the chat. Yeah, so this is the my answer is different depending on the company, right? So when we're talking about small business owners, and for, like myself, for example, I have uh, we we have you know, content specifically for the company page and content specifically for the personal page, but we also share some of my personal stuff on the company page. So you can leverage both simultaneously and you can leverage content that you're posting on your personal profile and you can share it on your company page and vice versa. So if you have company page content, you can then share that on your personal profile. So what I like doing though is we, is all company side, right? So everything on the company side, it's coming from we, it's coming from our clients, this, this, it has to be very company driven. It's not like I, you know, it's not like your personal brand. It's totally different. It's like you as the collective company and you're using customer stories, whatever. Your personal posts are first person, right? So it needs to be more about you as the professional, as the human being. Um, and you can still post some of that. You can share that on the company page, but they still need to be two different content strategies. Does that make sense? Um, I hope so for Dan. Um, uh, with that said, I will go ahead and jump to the second question. What's the best way to brand yourself as a returning worker after staying home to raise kids? Um, they go on to say, I use my I background, like my profile, and have extensively filled out my career history. Do you recommend using keywords for industries I'd like to move into? Do you like the looking to work banner? How do you best navigate LinkedIn for a job seeker? That's a great question. I love that question. Yes, use the banner looking for work. Yes, use keywords of the industries you're trying to get into and optimize your entire profile on what you're trying to do. So have an idea of what jobs you're looking to get, what industries you're looking to get into, and then make your profile frame that around the value that you bring to the table in that industry. So what are your unique skill sets for that particular industry for these jobs? And to be honest, girl, more important than anything is your networking chops. Like you have, so optimize your profile first and foremost, like that's like number one, but you have got to get out there and start networking with people and just start building relationships. Like that's the most important thing you can do right now. Um, I wouldn't even worry too much about content. Like maybe post once a week just to keep it fresh and updated, but I would spend way more time making sure your profile is optimized and crystal clear. And then the rest of the time you need to be networking and sending those connection requests every single day with people that you're trying to get in front of, or even people in the industry that you can just ask questions with and they could possibly become a mentor. It really is all who you know, and LinkedIn is prime for you to build those relationships. And I can tell you right now, people in your position are not doing what I just said. They're not, they're, they don't know what to do or they're lazy. So when you do these things, uh, you'll be able to get a job. I promise you. And Mandy, quickly following up, a stay-at-home parent could post about their experiences at home, being the chief 100%. executive of a household, and that would resonate sure. on LinkedIn because we have yes. so many working parents on LinkedIn. One hundred percent. No, I love that. Embrace it for sure. It, lean it, in. As long as you're, yeah, lean into. It. As long as you're letting people know, like these are the the skill sets and the value that I can provide for you know the roles that you're looking to do. You can literally, you know, the sky's the limit on how you embrace what you've been doing for the last however many years. Agreed. David, I think we have time for a couple more. Yeah, we got another one here. This probably is a short answer. Do you recommend taking dates off college if you're slightly considered older to help navigate? I love that. Any I love that question. Challenges? Yes, I get that question all the time. Yes remove the dates. You could, I, I've had people that are like, can I remove my old jobs from like the eighties? You know, I'm like, yeah, remove, do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like remove old jobs. If you don't people knowing that remove dates, like, yes, you can, you can do that. 100%. Have you heard from clients, those on the hiring and big companies that they, they will shy away or that there's any concerns there? Or that is that the sort of thing that nobody's going to share because they know it is ageist? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. No one's ever said anything to me about it. Right. So. But it is a legitimate question for a lot of people, especially in some yeah. careers, right? Technology tends sure. to you younger. Oh, 100%. And so I would see why somebody <laughs> would want to remove that. It's a great question. David, next one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a, th this question resonates for me. In building your network and having a human conversation, how do you manage 50 plus conversations at the same time? <laughs> 
That is a really good question. Um, well, my answer is get help. <laughs> so, but not everyone can do that, right? Um, so I have obviously people that help me manage my LinkedIn. It is, uh, it can become challenging, I'm not gonna lie. So you just have to be disciplined and find a system that works for you. So leave messages unread and only do so many a day if it's too much, right? So just have a system down where you're not missing things because you leave your messages unread. There's all sorts of like paid LinkedIn CRMs, messages and stuff, but you don't need that unless you're you know, in sales, I would say, um, or using LinkedIn for Legion. But if we're using it for something else and you're just you know, on the free version of LinkedIn, Yes, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it, you know, is easy peasy. Uh, like my new hat that says "easy peasy lemon squeezy" that I got in in Norway. I love it, um, but it's not. It, I'm not gonna lie. Like none of this is like super. Oh, it's just like you know, it's so easy. You have to be disciplined and you have to be organized. So get a system down, whatever it is. You know, mark it unread and do ten a day if you can, and then come back and do the rest. So I don't know what to tell you other than the fact that. You have a couple of options. You can get a tool to help you with this. Where you can tag people. There's all sorts of paid like LinkedIn CRMs. You can get help with like a virtual assistant, or you can just come up with your own system. And I'm guessing the other thing is you don't need to go from zero to sixty, right? Like you could start. Well, a few no, you conversations. can't. You literally can't. Like LinkedIn will block you. Like first of all, you're limited to do. You're limited to a hundred connection requests a week, so they say. Um, if you don't do this normally, they're, they are going to limit you to 100 weeks. So you you can't come out of the gate and just go crazy or they're going to flag you and they don't kick you off or anything. They just pause your account and they're like, you've sent too many requests. So you know what I mean? Like if you spend an hour a day doing this, you'll be totally fine. You'll be able to handle this. So like you can't go crazy anyway. Um, but even with even with 10 or 15 a day, it can still get, you know, a lot to handle. If you have conversations going with all of them, I'm not going to lie. But uh Use that unread feature, man. Just make sure you don't miss anything. And, and pace yourself. David, we've got time yourself. for one more quick question before our final thoughts. Um, yeah, we have, maybe we could, we'll see how long the answer is for this one. We do have just two in the queue. So I'm hoping- We'll do both we of them. Sneak this last them. one in. Um, yeah. This one's from Jeff. Is there any benefit to pay for the premium LinkedIn? Does yes. LinkedIn reward you in any way for paying? I love that you asked this question because that's pretty much all we work with. Uh, so we train sales teams on sales navigator. So there's different versions, right? So you have LinkedIn premium, you have sales navigator. So it is 100% worth it. Uh, that just like Facebook, they're going to reward you if you pay them, right? So we have noticed that, um, well, first of all, when it comes to networking, there is no question the premium side sales navigator is the, you know, the golden child, if you will, but even premium, you're going to get way more opportunities to find the people you're looking to connect with. When you upgrade the search feature on LinkedIn free is weak. It's a weak sauce. You can't really get super granular and you can't find the exact people you're going after. The more you pay, the more, open you are to finding anyone and everyone you want to get in front of like really really detailed so the more you pay to them the better you are with connecting with very um targeted people that's the big difference when it comes to content and stuff it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter if you pay they're not going to give you more views on your posts because you pay for them it, it literally is all about the search features so i think it's worth it uh personally if you're using it for building relationships with whatever you're trying to do on a consistent basis, whether it is sales or recruiting, whatever it is, but they have a recruiter version for that, which is totally different too, obviously. Um, so my answer is yes, it, it does make a difference, but it all depends on what you're using LinkedIn for. Mandy, last question I got for you. This one is from Mark. I'm going to read it for you verbatim. So this is all the information I have. I okay. manage two businesses. How do I set up my profile? I would presume their personal profile to be not confusing for potential people I want to talk to? That's a really good question. And also a question that I get often. And it is tricky um, because you it is completely possible to do. You just have to be really clear in your profile on your two different companies and how they're different. And you need to have two different experience sections. So you have your, your top area, your headline and your beautiful mug shot and the information about you. And then you have your about section and then you have your experience sections, right? So you need to make sure that you have both experience sections with both companies and it needs to be really crystal clear what you do at both those companies. So what both of those companies do. And then in your about section, you need to talk about you as a professional in general. So your overall skill sets, the value you bring to the table. And then you need to also describe both of your companies and the, and kind of the ICPs there, right? So who who is the ideal customer there and the value that you provide for both of them. So as long as you're crystal clear, 
that these are both your organizations and people know the difference between them, you're totally fine. And then you can post whatever content you want. It's just a matter of when people land on your profile and they read it, you don't want to confuse them, but I, I don't think you will if you spell it out. Like, this is what we do. You know, I hope that helped. Um, Matt, you can chime in if you have anything else. No, I think that I think that's fantastic. Be deliberate, right? Just be very clear yeah. about what you do and, and why you do it and that you do have these two different professions. Okay, Mandy, before we go, a few final thoughts about how people can best leverage LinkedIn for their own professional success. Number one, please, please, please. If you do anything from this session, go and optimize your profile first starting with your headline this is key so everything goes around your profile people are going to want to talk to you if you have an optimized profile there's a lot of people that will not talk to you if your profile is lame and it doesn't say what you do so rule number one please optimize your profile use my checklist use my profile as an example take whatever you need um, to use it as a, as a reference as a resource the second one is start engaging with people this is key we didn't even talk about this a lot because there's you know i could talk about this for hours but if you start leaving five plus comments a day on people's posts you're going to notice a massive increase in your views and your connections and people responding to you so engage with people so that's that friendly leader method that i talk about but i'm not just talking about it to connect with people i'm talking about it in general please leave comments please engage with people that's how you build relationships that's how you get found on linkedin that's how you increase your visibility and get people to trust you as a you know an industry thought leader so comments 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 engage with people and then post the right contents uh, so post valuable content curate content get your feet wet if you're not used to posting content just start curating your company's content like that's a really good place to start so go and share company page content or industry news other thought leaders in your industry that are posting great content share their content engage with them and uh, make sure you get a cadence down of posting at least once a week um I, every day is is ideal you know the more the better if you can do twice a week that's awesome but just try to get some sort of regular cadence going with your posts Fantastic. And if we could, can we put up Mandy's LinkedIn profile checklist one last time? So either grab your smartphone, snap that QR code, or just go to modgirl.info slash live. Anything else, Mandy, before we go? That's it. So grab that. And then obviously connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I would love to connect with all of you. So Mandy McEwen, that's my QR code for LinkedIn. Um, I'm active on all social, but especially LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with all of you and let me know how I can help. Um, and please use that checklist. Uh, and the key, you know, is just be yourself, just be authentic and engage with people. So it's not a one way street here on LinkedIn. Uh, it's not just about building your personal brand and posting content for you. It really is about the community and engaging and building real relationships. So go out there and do it and make things happen. Oh, let's make things happen. You know, from my profile to my connections to the content, I'm now going to start creating. Mandy, thank you. This has been incredibly of course. valuable. Yes. I really appreciate it. Where do Thanks I send the me. thank you gift? <laughs> right here. <laughs> okay. Everywhere. Well, this has been life changing. Thank you, Mandy, <laughs> once again. And David, with that said, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you very much for that. We want to thank Talent Reach, Helen, Jeff, Eric. And the rest of the team for hosting this really informative webinar today with Mandy McEwen. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we all did. This webinar will be available for on-demand replay early next week. We'll be sending all registered attendees an email with a link. Stay tuned for the next Talent Reach hosted webinar. That'll be coming up in the fall of 2022. This concludes our webinar for today. The Batten Hill Group thanks you for joining us.